Okay, so we're starting oh, without, without our band. I think I've muted everyone. Yes. So we start standing up without our bands. So we lengthen up, pull your belly button to the spine, shoulders down your back pockets. Remember, always pulling the belly button to the spine. Imagine it's the third knot on the belt. So you've got 10 notches. If you want to pull it to number 10, you're going to really pull your belly button to the spine. So we're pulling it to the third notch and always gently tuck the tailbone under. So we're just going to do a couple of arm circles today. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Or we do three. Only if you want to, you can come up onto your tiptoes. Remember, relax your hands and lengthen through the joints. We're going to change it straight into chicken wings. Can you step your left foot forward as we change it straight into chicken wings? Only if you want to, you can take some pressure out your big toe or you can come up, float up your knee. Can you see I'm lengthening my arms up to the ceiling? Elbows are all the way down to my rib cage, my waist, hands to my thighs. You lengthen up. So you choose the leg for the position that's good for you. You might want to lengthen out your leg. This one's really good for releasing tension. You hold in the neck and the shoulder, squeeze your shoulder blades together, elbows to your waist. Let's change over legs. It's your right leg now. So a little bit of pressure out your big toe. Maybe some of you are floating up your knee. Maybe some of you are lengthening out your leg. Squeezing your shoulder blades together. One more. Elbows into your waist, hands down to your thighs. Just gently hold on to your head, tilt your head to the right, thumb your fist down and away as you look down to the floor. So I'm really thumbing my fist, lengthening it down to the floor and away. Look down to the floor, feeling a nice deep stretch, the muscles in the neck and on the top of the shoulders, and back to centre. <clears throat> and just gently. Bring your, just put the weight of your arm, tilting your head to the left, thumb your fist down and away. So I'm feeling a nice deep stretch, look, it down, look down at the floor, feeling a nice deep stretch in the muscles in my neck and my shoulders. And back to centre. We get Pilates stance, so if you can glue your heels together, we're going to dive over the ball. So we're not diving over the ball, actually, we're rolling over. First of all, with a straight back. Hold on to your hips. So I'm really sticking out my bottom. So I'm feeling already a deep stretch in my glutes and my hamstrings. Pilates stance if you can. And I'm being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head. Nice straight back. Some of you might want to hold on to your thighs as you slowly come down to the floor and pick up your band. Now, some of you might not be able to touch the floor. So you're going to rest on your cushion or your ball as we lengthen it out to the right up to the ceiling, now I'm pushing into my heels, tailbone up to the ceiling, always pulling my belly button to the spine, lengthen back to centre and over to the left. Out to the side or up to the ceiling, push into that supporting hand, I'm pushing into my heels, tailbone up to the ceiling, let the top of your body hang, squeeze your glutes up, you might can hold onto your thighs to take pressure out your lumbar spine as we slowly roll up, one vertebra at a time back to centre, into mountain, you can come up onto your tiptoes. Only if you want to, glue your ankles together, challenges your balance a little bit more, prayer, arms in line with your ears. And back into mountain. And prayer. Now come down to the soles of your feet, even regular stance, if you can keep your heels glued together, great. So we lengthen over to the left, squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button to the spine and lengthen, lengthen as you pull the band apart. Feeling a nice deep stretch in the waist and the hips and back to centre. Over to the right, I'm sticking out my hip there, squeezing my glutes, pulling my belly button to the spine. Back to centre, we'll do one more either side. really feeling that deep stretch. Remember holding the stretch, you're strengthening, so you're toning up that waist there.
and back to center. Just roll it out, squeeze your shoulder blades together, open up your chest. We're going to do a trapezius stretch now, which again is really great for releasing tension. You lengthen your arms up to the ceiling. Only if you want to, you can come up onto your tiptoes to challenge your balance. Or you might want to glue your ankles together up on your tiptoes. And I'm lengthening, I'll just show you from the front. I'm lengthening my left arm behind your left. Can you see my hips are set in stone? And back to center, we come to the other side. Right arm, your right. Hips are head light out in front. You don't move your hips, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Can you see one arm stays lengthened up to the ceiling and the other one comes behind? I'm going to show you side view. I'm looking over my shoulder, my hips don't move, keeping one arm lengthened up to the ceiling. Really squeeze the shoulder blades together, lengthen the arms away from each other. Really releases tension in the trapezius, a huge muscle that runs from the bottom of your neck all the way down your back. And back to centre and just roll it out. We're going to do one more roll down, so Pilates stance. Hold on to your hips. Stick out the bottom. Really stick out the bottom, micro bend in the knees. And I feel like I'm being pulled by a piece of spring. So I'm feeling a really deep stretch here. Nice straight back. Some of you with lumbar spine issues, you're holding on to your thighs when you go to the left and right. The rest of us, you can hold on to your thighs or let the body hang as you come down to the mat. And you lengthen to the right. Lengthen back to center and over to the left. Pushing into that supporting hand. Remember, some of you might have your block. Just taking pressure out the lumbar spine and lengthen back to center. Let the top of your body hang. Some of you might want to hold on to your thighs. That's okay. To protect your lumbar spine. Squeezing your glutes, pulling your belly button to the spine and back to center. Before we get down to the mat, we're going to do a lunge. So come to the front of your mat or if, you, if it challenges your balance, Come off your mat. So my feet are mat, uh, my feet are hip width apart. I'm not on a tight rope, then that's going to really challenge your balance. So step your right foot back. Knee stays stacked over your ankle. Lengthen up. We're going to cross our arms. Elbows at shoulder height, and I rotate over to my right. Lengthen up. Nose stays between my chest. So my nose is in the middle of my arms and back to center. And over to the left. Lengthen up. Pull that belly button to the spine and lengthen up. I'm squeezing my glutes, tucking my tailbone under, feeling I'm stretching my hip flexors. Hold on to your hips. Left foot is set forward, right arm lifts up and over. So I'm lengthening, being pulled by a piece of spring. Don't lean forward, shoulders down your back pockets, feeling it in the waist, feeling it in the hip flexor. And lengthen back to center. Hold on to your thigh and step forward. Step the left foot back. So your lunge might be here. It might be slightly deeper. So your lunge is personal. I'm hip width apart. Knee stays stacked over my ankle. Pushing into my heel. Squeezing my glutes, lengthening up. Cross your arms. Rotate to the right. Now my nose stays in between my chest. And my nose is in between my arms. I'm center. And I'm really rotating my torso there. And back to center. Over to the left. Lengthen up, push into the back heel, feeling a nice deep stretch in the hip area, the hip flexor. Hold on to your hips. Right leg is stepped forward, left arm lifts up and over. This really challenges your balance here. So I've really been lengthening through the shoulder joints, being pulled by a piece of spring from the crown of the head, and lengthen back to center. That's a really deep stretch in that hip flexor. Hold on to your thigh and step forward. We'll just shake it out. So you should just feel nice and warmed up now and a little bit more mobile. So we're going to start with these spine twists today. So you're going to sit on a block. And just, it doesn't matter if your legs are bent. So the aim is to get length and legs. It's okay if your legs are bent. Now I'm going to have the ball in between my hands. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate, hold on to the ball. 
and lengthen my arms away from each other and prance off my baby toe. Then I rotate to the other side, lengthen my arms away from each other. Now, some of you might want to do that with extended arms with or without a band. And can you see, I keep continuously, my arms are continuously extended. I'm gonna take you through the progressions. Hold on to the ball. So I rotate. Over to my left, so it's your right. Nose stays between the ball. Rotation of my upper spine. I lengthen my arm to my baby toe. Try and saw off my baby toe. And I'm lengthening my arms away from each other. Keep the weight on the seat base and back to center. Rotate over to the right, my right, your left. Lengthen up. It's rotation of my torso. I don't overextend my head. Lengthen my arm. So it's opposite arm to opposite baby tails. I lengthen my arms away from each other. And back to centre. So you can carry on doing that. Some of you might want to take it a little bit further with or without the band. Shoulders down my back pockets. Rotate. Nose stays between my chest. I'm lengthening up, pulling my belly button into the spine. Nice straight arms. Opposite hand to opposite baby toe. I'm being pulled by a piece of string and keep my arms nice and lengthened. Hold on to the ball if you've got shoulder issues. This is going to put, so this is really working your shoulders. Anyone with shoulder issues, hold on to the ball. I'm really thinking about keeping the weight on my seat bones. We're gonna make this just the final one. And back to centre. Drop the band. We're going to do a couple of spine stretches. So your feet are mat width apart. I'm flexing my feet. Now either you're going to lengthen up, lengthen your arms up to the ceiling, flex feet. If it's too uncomfortable as we come down, I want some of you just to keep your hands between your legs. So you lengthen up, pull the belly button to the spine. We hinge forward, nice straight back. I'm being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head and I'm lengthening from the hip joints. I really feel the lengths coming from the hips, flex the feet, everyone's hands come down to the mat. I'm being pulled by a piece of string, it's not trying to get my nose on my knees, it's about lengthening forward. Then roll that spine one vertebrae at a time and back to centre. One more. So level one, hands on the mat, level two, lengthen them up to the ceiling. Hands in, my arms are in line with my ears. Hinge forward. Can feel the deep stretch in the muscles in the back of my legs. Flexing those feet, really feeling that in the calf muscles. Lengthening from the hip joints, feeling that in the hamstrings and glutes. And I'm elongating my spine. So I really feel I'm being pulled by a piece of string, creating space between the vertebrae. And roll up. One vertebrae at a time and back to centre. So we're going to slowly roll down. We do this every week. So you choose if you want the assistance of your band to slowly roll down. Level one, two or three. So really relax the feet. So we're still gently squeezing our glutes here. In yoga, they tell you to spread out your glutes. But here we're still gently squeezing our glutes because we're protecting our lumbar spine. So we lengthen up. Lean back, bandage, tuck in your pelvis. Relax the feet, relax the legs. Pull the belly button to the spine. Really slowly, breathing coming down. Especially as you breathe out. Pull that belly button to the spine. And I'm really scooping my pelvis, turning my pelvis into a wheel, turning my spine into a wheel. Trying to hit every single vertebrae. Remember, don't forget, some of you might have a cheat cushion underneath your lumbar spine. Stops you from slumping down and going down too quickly. Slowly, slowly. You don't want, you only want to see your elbows and your peripheral vision if you're at level two or three. When you come down to the mat, hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side, crossing your ankles, pulling your knees apart. Or some of you might want to remove your block and just do your Joseph Pilates rollover, part your legs wider the mat width part if you can, and slowly roll down one vertebra at a time. 
Try to take the pressure out of those hands. <sighs> Hugging your knees to your chest. Lengthen the left leg, right leg away as you hug your left knee to the chest. Really relax. Hugging the left knee to the chest. Bring that left knee slightly out to the side. Thigh skin to your rib cage. Hold on to your hamstring, calf muscle, your ankle. Push into your heel. Start circling that ankle one way and then the other. Now, some of you can float up your head and shoulders. Don't do this if you get pressure in the neck. Feeling a nice deep stretch in the muscles in the back of the legs. Bend your knee, lengthen this way and bring up the opposite knee. Lengthen through the hip joint. Right knee comes slightly out to the side. Thigh begins your rib cage and hold on to your hamstring, calf muscle or your ankle. Push into the knee, into the heel. Float up your head and shoulders for some of you. Keep on lengthening through the left leg. For those floating up, see if you can get the bottom of your ribs to the top of your hips. Really feeling a deep stretch in the legs and working your core. Bring your knee up, right knee to tabletop. Tee your arms. Shoulder issues, you bring your arms slightly close to your thighs and you bring your right leg over to the left, looking in the opposite direction. You can put a little bit of pressure on your knee. Shoulders stay glued to the mat. Bring your knee back to centre, really relax that leg, squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button to the spine and we swap over. <sighs> Left knee over to the right, looking in the opposite direction. Keep that right leg completely lengthened, glue the shoulders to the mat. The aim is to get the knee as close to the mat as possible. <sighs> and back to centre. So we're going to start toe tapping now. So I want everyone to lengthen their arms up to the ceiling. You, some of you might want some weights in your hands. Everyone's going to lengthen their arms up to the ceiling. If it really is too uncomfortable, keep them rested on the floor. But aim to lengthen the arms up to the ceiling. Hardly any pressure under the soles of my feet. Pulling my belly button to the spine as I bring one leg, knee up to tabletop and back to centre. I'm on thin ice. That's right knee. Now I'm on thin ice, so I've got hardly any pressure under the soles of my feet. Toe tap. Can you see my knee joint is not moving? It's all from my hip joint. I watch so many people do this. You've got to not move your knee joint. It's all from the hip joint. Now, if you want to progress, tabletop. Tapping your foot on the mat. Relax the foot and leg. Now, if you want to progress, you can lengthen your arms over your head. So you choose the arm position that's good for you. Now we're doing toe tap. If you want to progress, can you see I'm going to scissor now my legs. As one foot comes down, the other one comes up. This makes it much harder. So you choose the level that's good for you. Pelvis doesn't move. Relax the feet, relax the legs. If you want to progress even further, you do that with straight legs. Complete scissors there. Remember, you can always come up and down a level. So I'm getting fatigued now, so I'm bending my knees, scissoring. I want a little bit of break. So I'm just tapping my foot into the mat. Or soles your feet up to tabletop. Let's do our final one either side. I can really feel that in my core, especially with my arms lengthened up to the ceiling. Final one. Then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Now, if you remove your block, your knees are hip width apart. We're just going to do a nice bridge, just, just stretching it out. Feet are close to my seat bones and I'm squeezing my glutes, pushing into the heels. Can you see I've taken pressure out my toes, lengthening my knees away. Now, if you can, can you lengthen your right leg away? And I'm really pushing into the heel, left heel, to maintain that alignment. Knee comes back to centre, foot comes back down to the mat. Left leg lengthen. Can you see my thighs are in alignment? And I'm really thinking about pushing into my heel. 
And I want you to lengthen your arms up to the ceiling or over your head and do the same again. If it's too uncomfortable, you can hold on to your thighs as you lengthen away. It's up to you. Lengthen. Then tuck in your pelvis. Keep those arms lengthened over your head. Squeeze glutes as you tuck in your pelvis and slowly roll down your vertebrae one at a time and lengthen your arms back to centre. Put the block back under your head and take your ball between your knees and tee your arms. So I'm going to squeeze the ball. We do this one every week. So either soles of the feet on the mat or you can do it at tabletop. So I'm squeezing the ball. Take the pressure out of the feet. You're on thin ice. Automatically taking the pressure as much as I can off the feet. That activates my core. And I'm really pulling my belly button to the spine. So I'm squeezing the ball, relaxing my feet. Squeeze, squeeze. Feel it in the thighs, in the thighs. Feel it in your core. You're dropping your knees to the left as you look to the right. Squeeze the ball. Relax the feet. Lengthen out the top leg, lengthen through the hip joint, lengthen through the shoulder joints, but squeeze at the same time, relaxing the foot. Bend the knee, squeeze the ball back to centre, melt the rib cage into the mat, squeeze the ball over to the right, look to the left. Lengthen the top leg, feeling a lovely deep stretch down the lateral side. Bend the knee, squeeze the ball back to centre, really feeling it in the core. We do one more either side. Some of you might be doing it at tabletop. Squeezing the ball over to the left. Looking to the right. Lengthening out the top leg. Relax those feet. Squeeze the ball back centre. Over to the right and look to the left. Squeezing the ball. Lengthening out the top leg. Bend the knees. Squeeze the ball back to centre. And then hug the knees to the chest and rock from side to side. Or some of you might want to remove your block. Now the aim is to stay on your shoulders, not your neck, and tap your toes on the floor. Part your legs, flex your feet, and you slowly, slowly roll down, taking the pressure out your hands. Just a deeper lumbar spine stretch, really using the core, deep core muscles, hugging your knees to the chest. So the next exercise we're going to do is the bicycle. So you're going to hug your knees to your chest and you lengthen your legs up to the ceiling. If it's too uncomfortable to do a bicycle up to the ceiling, you can do it with one leg. So like you're still doing a bicycle action with one leg and you're going to swap over halfway through. So we lengthen our legs up to the ceiling. You're going to choose the arm position that's good for you. You know how it works. We're going to start cycling. Pull your belly button to the spine. Remember, if you get any neck issues, make sure you're on your block or you might need a slightly higher block if you feel you get any neck issues. Can you see what I'm doing with my hands here? Another uh, way to get away with, um, to really, um, to remove the pressure from your neck. I've got my elbows rested on the floor as my hands point up to the ceiling. That just takes pressure away from your neck. Slow and controlled cycles. Now I want those cycles to be as big as possible without floating up your rib cage, pulling your belly button to the spine. Can you see how slow and controlled my cycles are? Really feeling that in the quads, the muscles in the front of my legs. Big, slow cycles. Slow and controlled. They say each cycle should be about four seconds. So it doesn't matter if your cycles are up here. Swap over legs, please, for those who have one leg cycles. Might be able to get them slightly bigger. And I'm lengthening through the hip joint. You choose the arm position that's good for you. We'll just do a couple more slow and controlled. Not only is that burning my core, really feel that in the quads. Let's make it our final one. Then we're going to hug our knees to our chest and rock from side to side. Our feet come mat width apart. You tee your arms 
and your, your feet are mat width apart as you drop your knees to the left and you look to the right. And I'm lengthening my top hip away, squeezing my glutes, tucking my tailbone under. Progression, left foot on right knee. And I'm still lengthening my hip away, squeezing my glutes. Lengthening through the knee joint, feeling a nice deep stretch just here. The muscles in the front of the legs. Feet are mat width apart. Bring your knees back to centre, drop your knees over to the right, look to the left. Really lengthen the top hip away through the knee joint, so I'm lengthening the knee away, sorry, but lengthening through the hip joint. Right foot on left knee is a progression and I'm still squeezing my glutes, lengthening the knee away, feeling a deep stretch in the muscles in the front of my legs. My feet can max width apart. And I bring my knees back to centre, hugging my knees to my chest, rocking from side to side, and then full body stretch. Pull your belly button to the spine, melt your rib cage into the mat, toes and fingers lengthening away from each other. We're going to come straight over to the side, and we're going to do a version of the oyster. Some of you might want to put a band on your thighs. So there's a version of the oyster. You know how it works. So my knees are bent in front. They're not behind like that. They're bent in front. They're not like that. Can you see my feet are in line with my bottom? Soles, your feet can stay on the mat or you can float them up to the ceiling. You choose the arm position. That's good for you. You know how it works. I'm going to open up my knee. Oops. I'm going to open up my knee as wide as it can go. Your feet can be on the floor. Now imagine you have a ball in between your legs and I'm going to bring my knee to my knee and my knee floats up, I'm diving over. So I'm, my, the ball is in between my knees and foot to foot. Knee dives over the ball, knee to knee, and then foot to foot. So my knee dives over that ball that's in between my legs, knee to knee, don't move your pelvis, and foot to foot. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing keeping my knee open. You can really feel that in the glutes, knee to knee, rotation of that hip joint, and foot to foot, really opening up that knee as much as I can. Really oh, feeling that in the glutes, knee to knee, foot to foot. You choose the arm position, that's good for you. This makes it much harder, up on your elbow. Knee to knee, foot to foot. Diving over the ball that's in between my legs, pelvis doesn't move, and foot to foot. Knee to knee, and foot to foot. Float up that waist, knee to knee, and foot to foot. I'm going to have to come down. So you rest whenever you are, and then come back into position. Always remember your pelvis remains completely vertical. Knee to knee, floating up that knee, foot to foot. Diving over the ball that's in between my knees. Really feeling that in my glutes, feeling that in my thighs. Let's just do a couple more. Knee to knee, foot to foot. Keep that knee open, close the knee, then pat it out. Hopefully you should feel felt that, especially in the glutes and the thighs. So we're going to go straight into our bow and arrow today. So some of you might want to do kneeling bow and arrow. I'll quickly show you. You, you can do maybe a one kneeling bow and arrow, just to see if you can um, do it, and then come down to your sideline bow and arrow. Shoulders stay stacked over my hand, hips over my knee, float the knee, the leg to hip height, close my book. And then open my bone arrow, pelvis doesn't move, set in stone, slow and control. So the rest of us, we're going to come into our side lying bone arrow, increasing the range of motion of our leg. So everyone's on the edge of their block, really important, you must be on the edge of your block, protects your neck. Arms in front, lengthen that leg diagonally across at hip height. That's not hip height. Don't drag your foot on the floor. Remember, if you are too tired, you can rest your leg. If you want to incorporate the leg, stay at hip height. 
I lengthen my top arm longer than my bottom. Open up my bow and arrow, my hands tight to my arm and my chest. And I open up my bow and arrow as I, as I increase the range of motion of my leg. Stay at hip height, don't drop the foot because you want to activate those glutes. And lengthen, lengthen back to center. Relax the leg, lengthen through the hip joint. Lengthen my top arm, longer than my bottom. My hand comes tight across my arm, tight across my chest. And I increase the range of motion of my leg. Lengthen the arms away from each other. Lengthen through the hip joint. Keep lengthening, slow and controlled. Keep that leg lengthened. Try not to bend the knee, lengthen through the hip joint. One more, bow and arrow. Keep that arm tight, hand tight across your arm and your chest. Don't drop the foot. Lengthen, lengthen. And lengthen back to centre. Keep that back, back leg lengthened. Don't bend it. Hold. So we can hold for a few seconds there, feeling it in the glutes and bend in the knee and passing it out. We're going to go into bridge. So today's bridge, you're going to come up and down in one unit. Now, only if you want to, whoa, spider. Um, only if you want to, you can have a loop, a resistance band around your hips as we go up and down in one unit, really working your arms a little bit more. So that's going to be the progression to really work the arms. So my feet are hip width apart. I have my band tight around my hips, but you don't have to. So my feet are close to my seat bones. I'm pushing into my heels, lengthening my knees away. Now the progression is that tight band. When I'm trying to rest my hands on the floor and I come down in one unit, hovering my spine one inch above the mat, up in one unit. Really feeling that in my arms because I have that band tight around my thighs. Down in one unit, up in one unit, lengthening the knees away squeezing my glutes down in one unit. You can rest whenever you like and then come back into position. Lengthening my with knees away, squeezing my glutes. I've got that band tight around my arms. Sorry, tight around my hips. So I can really feel I've created tension, working my glutes harder there, working the muscles in my core harder, and I'm really working my arms there. I can really feel that in my arms. But remember, some of you don't have to have the band at all. And you continue coming up and down in one unit, lengthening the knees away, squeezing the glutes, opening up the hip flexors there. Now we're all going to tuck in our pelvis, C curve our spine and slowly roll down our spine to the mat. You're going to have a little rest and come back into position. So some of you are going to come back into position and come up and down in one unit when some of us, are going to hold on to our hamstrings, come up into your boat and teaser. Remember, you can hold on to your hamstrings for support. Stick out the chest, nice straight spine, boat, tray drinks on your shins, don't drop those shins. And we're going to do one more. We come up into position, and we're coming up and down in one unit. Pushing into my heels, lengthening the knees away. I've got a tight band, so I can really feel that in the arms. Can you see I've taken the pressure out of my toes, pushing into the heels, squeezing my glutes. Let's just do two more. Now, for those who are going to come into a boat and a teaser, slowly roll down. And for those who don't do boat or teaser, just do another three, two to three, and then slowly roll down and hug your knees to your chest. We all hug our knees to our chest and rock from side to side. And full body stretch. Pull your belly button to the spine, melt your rib cage into the mat. 
and I lengthen my toes and fingers away from each other. And we're going to slowly roll to the other side. Slowly, slowly, this is so hot. And we're going to do our version of the booster. I try and show you, like imagine there's a ball in between your legs. So I'm, so I'm in position and you're diving over that ball. Can you see the ball obviously is a bit bigger at the moment. I've got to try and dive over that ball. Can you see what I'm doing? Feet on the mat or floated. You choose the leg position that's good for you. We float up. I've got a resistance band. And I'm diving over that ball. Pelvis doesn't move. Knee to knee, foot to foot. Knee to knee, keep that knee floated. So I float up that knee as high as it can go, foot to foot. Diving over that ball in between my legs, knee to knee. Choose the arm position that's good for you. Remember, you're always being pulled by a piece of spring from the crown of the head. Glutes are on fire. And shoulders are down my back pockets. Rest whenever you like and come back into position. Foot to foot. Knee to knee. I'm rotating my leg and my hip joint there. Foot to foot. Lift up that waist. Really feel that in the glutes and the thighs. Oh, I'm going to have to come down. Let's just do a couple more. Knee to knee, not moving my pelvis, foot to foot, opening up that knee as much as I can. We're doing one more. Open up, hold, and close the knee. I really feel that in my glutes. We're going to go straight into our open foot. No, we're not. We're doing bow and arrow today. Lying on the edge of our block. Some of you will go into your side kneeling bow and arrow. So make sure those knees are in front. You lengthen the top leg diagonally across. And we open up our bow and arrow tight across my chest. And I'm increasing the range of motion. Don't drop the foot. Close the book and swing the leg behind. Lengthen, lengthen that leg. Relax the foot. Tight across my arm and my chest. Head follows my hand. Let's increase the range of motion of my leg. And close my arm. Swing my leg, lengthen leg, don't bend that knee, keep it lengthened. Pelvis is always vertical. Then drop the foot, keep those glutes fired. Bend the knee. And cut it out. So we're going to go into prone now. Today's prone, only if you want, you can have weights in your hands. Now, we're not going to do anything with our legs apart from being mat width apart. I'm lying on the mat. My, my hands are underneath my shoulders. My elbows are tucked into my rib cage. Now, if that feels uncomfortable, you can walk your hands forward slightly so they're next to my ears but my hands are underneath my shoulders, elbows tucked into my rib cage. Squeeze your glutes, pull your belly button to the spine, push that pubic bone into the mat as you lengthen and lift your head and sternum. So I'm pushing my feet into the mat, squeezing my glutes, looking down in the mirror as I float up my head and sternum. Try to push those feet into the mat, squeezing the glutes. So I lengthen and lift, pushing my feet into the mat, squeezing my glutes, pulling my belly button to the spine, elbows tucked into the rib cage. And I'm not trying to put, put too much pressure in my hands. Now, if you want to progress, I'm squeezing my glutes and I float up my hands at the same time. See if you can hold it for a couple of seconds and back to center. Take a breath in, either keeping your hands on the mat or floating up your hands. And now I'm really squeezing my shoulder blades together squeezing my glutes so you choose progression my legs not floating off the mat and push trying to push the top of my feet 
into the mat. So I'm getting a little bit tired. Now I'm gonna just float up my head and sternum. Try not to put too much pressure in my hands. Back to center. I can feel that in the muscles in my back. I can feel that in my glutes. Squeeze in my glutes, pulling my belly back into the spine. Remember, you're always being pulled by a piece of string from the crying of the head. Coming up a level, squeezing my shoulder blades together. If you choose to float your hands off the mat. Let's do our final one. Oh, I can really feel that in the muscles in the back of my glutes, even my hamstrings there. Capital E your arms and rock your hips from side to side. We're just going to do a lizard and then full cobra. So my feet are mat width apart and I lengthen my, I roll the marble forward with my nose. I lengthen and lift my head and sternum. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down in the back pockets. Now I'm pushing into my left arm, left hand, trying to fully extend my left arm. And I'm really looking up and over my left shoulder, looking at my left foot. As some of you might want to try and bend your right knee, progression, the bending of the knee. And slowly back to centre as you extend your leg. Did I say left knee? It should be right knee. We do the other side, roll the marble forward, chest out to the sun, shoulders down the back pockets. You push into the right hand, fully extend the right arm. Left elbow glued to the mat. You look over your right shoulder. See if you can look up and over. See if you can look at your right glute. Some of you might want to bend your left knee. Really look over your shoulder. Really a lovely stretch and lengthen back to centre. Now we're going to roll the marble forward. Lengthen, lift the head and sternum. Chest out to the sun. Shoulders down the back pockets. As we push into our hands, fully extend both arms, cobra. Some of you might have your hands under your shoulders for a deeper spinal extension. But you've got to keep your pelvis on the mat. Relax the bottom of your body. Elbows tucked into your rib cage as you come back to centre, less you're at capital E. <clears throat> everyone puts their hands underneath the... Everyone puts their hands underneath their shoulders and up into four point kneeling. Four point kneeling today is going to, we're going to extend our leg and it's elbow to knee or it's knee to nose, depending if you're incorporating the arms. Now, I'm really sorry for those who um, struggled with prone, I forgot to do, show you the alternative, but uh, the alternative for this one in prone, I want you to do the classic, Lengthening, lifting opposite leg and arm for this one. Because it's difficult to get your knee to your nose. See if you can hold it for at least two to three seconds. Now the rest of us were in four point kneeling. I'm so sorry, I um, got to do a cat in cow, didn't I? So let's start with cow first of all, sticking out your bottom, lengthening your neck forward. Shoulders down your back pockets, creating space between your ears and your shoulders. Now you're going to round and curl. Some of you might want to tuck your toes under, turn it into turbo cat. Floating up your knees for a cat stretch, pushing into my palms, pulling my belly back into the spine, squeezing my glutes. Turbo cat, floating those knees up by one centimetre. Stick out your bottom, lengthen your head forward, shoulders down your back pockets. Okay, one more cat, pushing into the palms, Squeezing your glutes, piece of string pulls you from the belly button to the spine, or somebody for you might want to turn it into turbo, a little more deep core work, and back to centre. Now we're going to do our knee to nose or knee to elbow, with or without a resistance band. So make sure you're stacked, shoulders got to be hip, hip width part, shoulders your hands are shoulder width apart. So I'm just going to show you with the leg first of all, we lengthen out the left leg. I'm going to round and curl and bring my left knee to my nose. And we lengthen out, keeping complete stability. Shoulder width apart, hip width apart. 
rounding tail, knees to nose, and then lengthen out. You're doing five to six one side, five to six the other. My progression is lengthening out the arm, rounding and curling, elbow to knee, lengthening out. Remember five to six one side, five to six the other. Incorporating the leg and arm, or just using the leg. When you've done your final five or six, you come to the other side. So either just the leg lengthening, all about complete stability, round and curl, really touching my nose onto my knee, rounding and curling, and lengthening out, complete stability. Progression, lengthen out the arm. Knee to elbow, still rounding and curling. Lengthen out. Some of you might want to incorporate the band. You choose a level that's good for you. All of this can be done at plank two. When you've done five, six, one side, I just want you to do two on either side. Just balance it out. Rounding and curling. Lengthen, lengthen, back to centre, just make it your final two. You're always lengthening through the hip joint, shoulder joint, complete stability. And back to centre. Everyone comes into a child's pose, see if you can glue your big toes together. Knees mat width apart, if you can, lengthening your arms forward. Rest your forehead on the mat and rock your forehead from side to side. Just getting your breath back. And we're going to walk our hands over to 10 o'clock. Right hand sits on left, pushing your chest into the mat. Feeling a nice deep stretch down the right side. Walk your hands over to 12. Then walk your hands over to two, left hand sits on right. When you walk those hands away so you feel a nice deep stretch down the lateral side, push that chest into the mat. Back to 12, I want you to really see care of your spine, really stretch that spine, spine rounding and curling, back to four point kneeling. So make sure your hip width apart, shoulder width apart as we open the book. So I have a band. Remember, you don't have to use a band at all. So we're going to lengthen our right arm out to the side or up to the ceiling. It's your range of motion. Keeping your hips stacked over your knees. Rotation of that upper spine. Then lengthen, lengthen the arm back to centre. Left hand threads underneath right. I'm pushing into my right hand. Really walk that hand away, the right hand, so I can really rotate my spine, feeling a lovely deep stretch. Progression before we unthread. Some of you might want to lengthen or lengthen and lift the left leg. Some of you might want to have a go at lengthening the left leg out to the side. You can have a go as you unthread your right arm out to the side or up to the ceiling. Pushing into that supporting hand. If you've got a band, you can have it as slack, as tight as you want. So lovely deep stretch, but we're continuously strengthening and toning. We'll do the other side. Lengthen our left arm out to the side, up to the ceiling, keeping my hips stacked over my knees, pushing into that supporting hand, opening up my chest and lengthen, lengthen. Back to center, left hand. Threads underneath right, and I'm really walking that left hand away as far as it can go. And my shoulder comes midline to the mat, and I push into my right hand, feeling a nice deep rotation of my upper spine. Some of you might want to lengthen or lengthen and lift the right leg, hips stay flat. Some of you might want to have a go at lengthening that right leg out to the side. If you've never done it before, have a little go if it's too much. Just, you know, next time you're not going to lengthen out that leg. It's a lovely deep stretch to the inner thigh. 
and lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Bring the leg in and we just come to seated. We're going to slowly roll down. You know how it works. You can use assistance of the band or you can be at level one, two or three. Really slowly work your core. We're nearly there. I'm going to go at level two. Lengthen up. Relax the feet and legs. Lean back by an inch. Then scoop the pelvis. Remember, some of you might need a cheek cushion. I'm squeezing my glutes, really scooping my pelvis, turning my spine into a wheel. Relax. Breathing. Especially as I breathe out, I'm really thinking about pulling my belly button to the spine. Really feel I'm switching on those deep core muscles. Slowly, slowly, let's work our deep core muscles. Really teaching our spine to be flexible there. Then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Well, some of you can do your final classic rollover. As I was saying, the aim is to tap your toes onto the floor without putting any strain on your neck. Part your legs, mat width part or even wider, flex your feet and slowly, slowly roll down. You don't want your rib cage to flare up, so you can lengthen to those legs to a point where your rib cage, rib cage doesn't flare up. Hug your knees to your chest, and then you're going to grab the band and put the band underneath the arch of your right foot. Left leg is bent or lengthened, depending on your flexibility. Push into the heel and hug that lengthened leg to the chest. Just breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Relax the foot, tee your left arm, and lengthen your right leg out to the side. Relax the foot and leg and lengthen through the hip joints, pulling the belly button to the spine. I'm trying not to put too much tension on the band, and I'm just bringing it all to my core. Lengthen, lengthen back to centre, relax on that foot. Band in the left hand, tee in my right. Look in the opposite, opposite direction. Keep that left leg nice and lengthened. And lengthen back to centre. Really feel that in the glutes. Try not to tug on that band. We swap over. Right leg is bent or extended, pushing into the heel. Feeling that deep stretch. Relax to your right. Left leg over to the side. Lengthen. And lengthen, lengthen back to centre. T the left. Look in the opposite direction. And back to centre. Drop the band, your left ankle and right thigh. Hug your right knee to the chest and really relax the right foot. Feeling a nice deep stretch in the left boot. Everyone lengthen only if you can, your legs up to the ceiling or get there any way you can and swap over right ankle on left thigh, relax the left foot, hugging your knee to the chest. Just breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just get your breath back. And gently put your feet down. We're just going to grab the ball, remove your block and put the ball underneath your head. We're just going to push into the ball for eight. Releasing tension you hold in the head, neck and shoulders. Remember the double chin. Take a breath in as you breathe out, push. And release. And again, take a breath in as you breathe out, so you push. And release. 
And one more, take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. And just gently roll your head from the left to the right. And really relax the muscles in the neck. You can really feel you're deepening the stretch in the muscles in your neck. Really relax. Just do one more and back to center. Just focus on your breath. And when you're ready, if you gently roll to the side and get yourself to seated in your own time, breathing continuously, we'll come to seated. I'm sitting on my block just to get that neutral pelvis. We lengthen up. I'm going to lengthen up my right to your left. Stay weighted in your seat bones and lengthen over. So I feel like I'm being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head. Feeling a deep stretch in my waist and my hips there, toning at the same time and lengthen forward. Stay weighted in your seat bones. And open. Being pulled by a piece of string, pull the belly back into the spine and back to center. And we do the other side. Right arm. Being pulled by a piece of string. Stay weighted in the seat bones. Don't keep the arm nice and lengthened. We're lengthening through the shoulder joint. Relax the hands, then lengthen forward. Look down at the mat. Feel a nice deep stretch down one side of your back. Back to your waist and your hips. Pull the belly button to the spine and lengthen back to center. We come to four point kneeling. So those with lumbar spine issues, you step forward. The rest of us, we're going to tuck our toes under. Oops. Pilates stance if you can. Pushing into your heels, tailbone up to the ceiling. I'm holding some weights here. Squeeze it, pull the belly button to the spine. Let the top of your body hang. Squeeze your glutes, pushing into your heels and slowly restack your spine. Squeeze those glutes. Protect that lumbar spine. Weights in my hands makes a huge difference. I can really feel I'm using my deep core muscles there. And back to center. Just do some arm circles, squeezing your shoulder blades together, opening up your chest. Only if you want to, you can come up onto your tiptoes to the soles of your feet, or some of you might want to stay on your tiptoes. Focus on the point out in front. Just do one more. Back to center. And thank you. Thank you, ladies. Oh gosh, I think I've finished one minute early. I'm going to have to work you harder next time. Thanks, ladies.